base. That frees up Dane Kelly. That frees up Ilya Illich. So you've got some options that you can play off of him. Looks like no substitutions for either side before we get to half number two. And Dane Kelly, bit of an ankle turn early in the half, able to play through it. Leading goal scorer Tyler Pasher for the Indy 11. And so many of those have come during the second half of matches. Looking to follow that same script here in half number two. The Indy 11 are back on the road on Friday night in Louisville. The next time they will be here will be a week from this coming Wednesday when they play host to the New York Red Bulls 2. 7 o'clock is the kickoff. You can watch it on My Indy TV and ESPN+. Plus. Officials are ready. So are we. And he had a shot 20 seconds in to half number one. Let's see if that can be the case in half number two. Joel Johnson able to shield that away from Iose. Charlotte has not won in their previous three tries against the Indy 11. For a first win is Charlotte since July 13th. They pulled just two draws in their last five matches. That's tough. There's such a mental side of the game, too, that it, that does grind on you. I mean, you get into places like here where you're up a goal, and it's almost like you have this feeling like, okay, we're gonna give one up. How do we how do we at least pull a draw out of here? Good pressure by Kelly. With Pasher lurking in the area. He creates so much off of just, you know, being that pesky defender. <laughs> 72 goals for Kelly at this level. And Jorge Herrera, 71. I expect to see him off the bench at some point tonight for the Independence. Tico got there first before Pasher could get to it. And then Enzo Martinez will lift it forward. Stumble by Charlotte. Eventually ruled as a foul. And not too much in terms of a protest from Ilya Illich on that call. This Porsche, the match brought to us by the Denny Companies. Denny Companies tearing down the past so you can build the future. Oduro. Well, Matt could not take a chance. He'll knock it over the byline for a corner kick. Yeah, that was a nice ball, and we met did well to, to recover and, and get back and poke that away before Oduro could get that ball to the ground and under control. Enzo Martinez. He has six assists on the season to take this one. Connor got there first. Tico couldn't get much on it. And then the blast by Afram Taku. First time we have called his name tonight. Could not get through. There goes Pasher. He's offside. Oh, yep. Yep. As soon as he turned on the Jets, the defenders hit the brakes. Yeah, they knew. They knew they were not going to catch him, but we can stop him this way. And that was right there. The ball needed to be delivered. You know, when Pasher goes full bore, he kind of looks like Dash from The Incredibles. I, I don't, okay. Just agree with that. <laughs> yeah, right. I agree. We'll rehearse that better next time. My apologies. Iose nods that forward. That's a great ball. Pasher will settle. Illich was the target. Never really got to him. Oh, good ball. Was that a handball? Yep. No, waved off. Wow. I thought it was. 
Official says no. It was just inside of the 18. And now Martinez trying to catch Newton off his line. Will simply knock it back to the opposing keeper some 50 yards down the pitch. Obviously, we will take a look at that when we have a stoppage in play. Illich able to get around Jackson. Looking for oh, Pasher, couldn't get it to clever, him. Clever, clever, but that ball's got to be out wide. But I think advantage was being played, and Indy will get a restart as Illich was fouled before he set up the pass. And now Ioze asking, hey, should that have been a handball? Should that have been a penalty? So from the ground level, Fans are seeing the same replay you're seeing here. And the arm was tucked into the body, but it did look like it yeah, hit the extended yeah. arm. And really, I think that's more of a rules interpretation more than is that, did that make contact? Right, and the ball landed at his feet, too. So, oh. Back post for oh. Jose Miller. Got a paw to it. Kelly elects to keep it in play. Steers it in, little back heel by Hackshaw. Couldn't find a teammate. And now Pasher finds an onside Barrett. Left foot got scuffed. As Barrett was looking for his first goal of the year. Had a window there, but didn't do what he wanted to with it. Yeah, clever though. I mean, I, he has a, a fake shot to create a little bit bigger window for himself. Now the Indy 11 have some guys somewhat out of place defensively as we met. Just now gets to the back line as he had been forward on the set piece. Looking for Martinez, but kind of broke off the run. And so still gives a thumbs up for the idea. So he's looking for his fourth goal of the year. Fans, Indy 11 Premium Suites are the perfect way to entertain your guests. Learn more at Indy11.com or call 317-685-1100. Number of home matches here are winding down for the year. Route one ball. Finds Farias, does track it down in time. Slides it through oh. the pasture, he whiffs, Illich's shot. Didn't really hit the fastball that time. What a vibe! Hi, Jose! If he hits that, of all the splendid plays he has made in two years in Indianapolis, that would have been number one. Uh, unbelievable, I mean, it's not really a great place to shoot. But this is a one-touch volley, and Miller has to make a save. Pasher the whiff. Again, Illich didn't hit all of it. Ioze certainly did. Unreal. Ioze plays it across, looking back post. Illich, bicycle! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> Flag stays down, goal in the 11. Drew Connor in his second in the 11 game. Gets his first in the 11 goal. Is that Patty Barrett? Holy smokes! He doesn't need the new red line. He'll take his bicycle to work, keeps it in play, and Connor delivers the go ahead goal. Oh my goodness. Illich keeps it alive. Barrett puts it on that target. Is ridiculous. And the sitter from Connor. That was a great shot on frame. And it was Oduro that kept him on side. Oduro was kind of out of the play along the end line. And that's what kept the flag down for Connor, who has played less than 100 minutes for the Indy 11 to find the back of the net. Wow. So first Indy 11 lead of this one. <laughs> Kelly the target. Tico got there first. So again, here's a look at that last goal. Great job by our camera crew. Again, it's Oduro behind the play. 
That's why the flag stayed down. And hard, hard to fault Oduro. The last right. thing you think is Patty Barrett's going to put a bicycle kick on goal that Miller's going to have to make a save and leave it at Connor's feet. Think of the two saves that Miller had to make on Iose and Barrett. And Indy still gets a goal oh, out of it. He's incredible. I mean, this is the same thing that you saw in the first time that Indy and Charlotte played. He makes great save after great save. It's just, you know, he's, he's unfortunate that the ball keeps finding the back of the net. Pasher. Ball took a little deflection off of his back. Well, another fantastic ball from Iose. I'm numb from Patty Barrett's bicycle. I'm just numb. Iose. Unreal. <laughs> this is. That's 50 this, yards this across the field. This should not be happening. Farias goes down. Outside of the 18, but contact wasn't given anyway. Goal kick coming for Charlotte. I, that's that's un unbelievable. If Patty Barrett doesn't make that his screensaver, then I'm I'm going to break his computer. That thing needs to be on loop constantly. Five goals have been scored by the Indy 11 against Charlotte this year. They have come from five different goal scorers. Pasher again finds some space. Turns back See that left last foot. Week. Instead finds Iose. Rolled to have gotten the ball first, did Johnson. I think that's the right call. Yep. Yes, there was contact, but clearly had the ball first. If you're Charlotte, what do you do? Okay, you you stop Basher from beating you with your left foot. He he slides it across the box. Now you got Iose. There's Kelly, but just a bit too strong. Right idea. And you can see how that goal has changed Charlotte. They've had that now they have to. They got to press. They got to open up. They got to put some more numbers forward, and that's creating these gaps that that Indy 11 is sliding the ball into. Fans for standing stats on the latest league news. Be sure to visit USLChampionship.com. Enzo Martinez has a good look going here. Pass could not slide through. And Gibson does a good job of steering that ball towards Iose. Kelly. Ball doesn't make it his way. Great job by Hugh Roberts to get in the passing lane. And Pasher will take a bit of a hydration break and let Iose come throw this ball in. And weather conditions could not be more perfect tonight. This is the third event at Lucas Oil of the weekend. High school football doubleheader Friday. Colts yesterday and 11 tonight. Roof and windows have been open for all three. And you have been in the building for all three. No, I had a high school football game out of the building Friday night, but this is the. They let you out of this building? Amazingly, what yes. What the heck? This is not my home. I thought not, you had close. a shock collar on that every time you got close to the door, you'd be called back. Kelly, blast with a good hit. Foot. Only two goals this year from outside of the 18 for the Indy 11. Kelly nearly had a third. So dangerous. I mean, that, that is a small, small, tiny window, but Dane Kelly is always on. Miller eyeballing that the entire way. Everybody. Throw in coming for Indy. I think in about 10 minutes or so, you're gonna, you got to see Jorge Herrera if they're going to you, you put him up top with Oduro and Martinez. You got three really lethal weapons. The lead for Pasher. Pasher trying to get to that corner. Good job by Roberts to knock it sideways. By Jose. To Hackshaw. work here by Indy. It's Lamette. Gives it a blast. He's a goal scorer. Why not? 
This portion of the match presented by Community Health Sports Medicine. Dream big, work hard, and finish strong. Fans, you get updates and alerts all year long by following your club on ESPN.com. Search for Indy 11, then click the follow button to keep up with the latest news and scores. Plus, get reminders on the Indy 11's next match. Go to ESPN.com now and click follow for more on your club. Village's pass a bit too strong for Lucas Farias. Got a good look at Herrera on the sidelines, warming up just a moment ago. You need to be careful in moments like this. I mean, you know, Charlotte has dangerous weapons. Martinez can, can serve from virtually anywhere. Attacking uh, in, in your defending half and defending third, really got to be really careful about giving up restarts. And of the four goals Indy allowed has, four goals Indy has allowed in this building, three have been on restarts. Only one from the run of play all season long. And there's a giveaway by Hatshaw. Charlotte looking to pounce. Four on three. On King has a Duro to his left oh. and couldn't get it to him. And now Farias leads the charge. There's Pasher trying to split two defenders. Can't do it. Late decision. Ooh. Assistant referee helps. The assistant referee waved the flag, said yes, that was a foul. Offered a second set of eyes. Tico, the guilty party. Free kick coming for Indy. About 25 yards from goal. That's a that's a dangerous spot. This this you could put that nail in the coffin here. Good piece of officiating too. Yeah. On the replay, you saw it was clear. Looks like Matt Watson, by the way, might be the first Indy 11 substitution. He's not ready yet. But he's going over some tactics with Juan Guerra on the sidelines. As Matty looks to make his 20th appearance of the season. Only Tyler Gibson now has played in every Indy 11 match. Tonight is 22nd start of the season. He may, he may try this himself. Barrett and Iose. It's Iose. He did, but not on target. Iose, one goal this year came from the penalty spot. And a 2-1 loss to Hartford back on July 13th. He had four goals a season ago. And Wamet oh. causes sponsors to lose attention oh, for the next several my minutes. Goodness. The economy has tumbled on the far sideline. Shot. A little too much. Connor, good win. Really good win. It leads to this. Illich. Pasher to his right. Kelly to his oh, left. Good find. Far right, Farias. Farias! Trying to slide it near post and to get Miller. Has been outstanding for Charlotte this evening. What a good find. And Illich takes just enough touches to attack centrally to keep the defenders frozen in the middle and unable to get out to Farias. Enzo to Alex, just a bit off on that pass for Charlotte. Matt Watson will enter, by the way. Dane Kelly has run his race for this evening as he'll exit in minute 64. Which means if Jorge Carrera can enter the game and find one yep. for Charlotte, he would be on level footing in terms of the all-time goal scored list. I, you know, and I know that as athletes, your your main focus is winning the game. But you can't tell me that Herrera isn't taking note of that at this point. Kelly sits at 72. Herrera 
at 71. Johnson takes it away from Iose. Good look here, and Wamet cleaned it up. Well takes done. no chances. I, and I'll tell you what, Johnson, with the job he's done on, you, you can't shut down Tyler Pasher, but you can keep him in check, and he's done that. And then his ability to get forward. I, I'm, I've been very impressed with his performance tonight. So corner coming, and so Martinez will take it. Alex Martinez a bit slow to get off the turf, giving us a little more time before this corner. And Newton with the left hand swats it away from an on-rushing Hugh Roberts. Farias and Watson elect to slow things down temporarily before Farias finds Pasher. Connor had his pocket picked by Jackson. By the way, it looks like Herrera is about to head towards the fourth official for the independents. And wow. Enzo would like to have that one back. This portion of this match is brought to us by Delta Fawcett. Delta Fawcett, see what Delta can do. Enzo Martinez, a first round pick back in 2012 of Real Salt Lake in the MLS Super Draft. And spent last year with the Colorado Rapids. Back in Charlotte this season. Aaron touch from Iose. You don't see that much. And Alex Martinez being told to back up just a few paces on the restart. Herrera getting some instructions from the sidelines. work by Watson and Connor. Watson giving you a bit of a juggling exhibition at midfield. The ball deflects off of Tyler Pasher. Could see a dual substitution coming in here. Valentin Sabella also getting ready to enter. Johnson plays it across. Hatshaw oh. didn't hit that the way he wanted to. Corner coming. We certainly have seen plenty of restart opportunities for Charlotte tonight. And it looks like both players will be waved on before the corner kick is taken. Sabella one goal and nine at previous appearances. He will enter as Aduro will exit across the byline. So Aduro's night is done. And then On King will come out the more traditional way as Herrera will enter. So two of the three subs in one fell swoop for head coach Mike Jeffries. Looking back post. Martinez couldn't line it up. And Illich will just knock that ball about 50 yards away to hit the reset button. By the way, this portion of this match presented by the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Take your business to the next level in a state that works. Leaving the match. Seven, Dominic Oduro. Well directed by Gibson. Defying the feet of teammate Lucas Farias. 
two subs available for Indy, one for Charlotte. Charlotte's done well to grab a little bit of this match back right now. This is the longest streak of possession they've had in a while. At least being played at their end of the pitch as the ball crowned the feet of Indy 11 defenders. Farias leaves it for Pasher. Pasher is onside. That's a foul. It's outside of the 18. That's not a penalty. It's outside of the 18. But it's awfully close. What a touch. Just his ability to understand where the pressure's coming from and take just enough of a nick on the ball to get it into the space to use his speed. Aaron Mon, the guilty party. Now, if that's a step or two later, that's a point to the spot. A great job by our camera crew to show you just outside of the 18. What are you dialing up here, Coach? I'll tell you what, I, I like the uh, Hackshaw and we met crashing in the box and Iose just putting it right there across the six. I also like Pasher up at the top. Pasher is unmarked outside of the 18. Don't particularly like that. Sabella got there first for Charlotte. Now Watson steers it towards Iose. Iose sends it in. Barrett will play it backwards to Tyler Gibson. Nothing really materialized from that opportunity for Indy. Iose looking for Illich. Roberts got there first. It's the little things. It's the little things that players do that make them great. And you look at that ball that was coming in the air. Pasher just, while while the ball is floating to him, takes his eyes off of it, checks his shoulder, finds out where the pressure is, knows he can bring it down, and knows in which direction he can take his first touch. Now Watson. Pasher, good-looking ball from Connor. Watson can't get there in time. The USL's elite youth platform, USL Academy, allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth and compete at the highest level across the United States, including the USL Academy Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com slash academy. Illich. We have learned quickly that Drew Connor is not afraid to mix it up in midfield. <laughs> yeah, we learned that in a matter of seconds. Good read by Alex Martinez to steer that ball away from Iose. And Barrett deemed to have been a bit too physical with Enzo Martinez. First real touch for Herrera tonight. Good looking ball oh, here. Oh, wow. It's Sabella. But I don't think he kept it. He yeah, did not keep it no, in the field of play. That's a, that's a ball that he needs to do better with. Played him in really brilliantly. The sports this match presented by Ivy Tech. Career start here. Apply for free at ivytech.edu. Well, you can see the urgency in, in Charlotte. They've stepped their line of pressure. They're and not allowing Indy even goal kicks out uncontested. Sabella is Argentinian, but grew up in Key Biscayne, Florida. 
and was playing for the Florida Soccer Soldiers when he was signed by the club in June. The Soccer Soldiers made a nice little run in the U.S. Open Cup this year. By the way, the finals of that, Tuesday night, Atlanta and Minnesota United will compete for the Open Cup Championship. Good-looking ball for Illich. Just couldn't slide it through to Pasher. It's a right thought. Yep. It's a right thought. Maybe that's a ball in the air instead of on the ground, and it's a different conversation. <laughs> Martinez doing a great job of walking that ball about 10 yards up the field. and coming for Indy. This portion of the match brought to us by Honda Manufacturing of Indiana, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. Hey, look at Charlotte. They've, they've had some good and interesting ideas over the last 20 minutes, but it's just that last touch, that last pass that's breaking down. Alex Martinez, Enzo Martinez. Little give and go here. Well, Matt got in the way. Brilliant. But not in a danger just yet. Mond. Newton. I'll tell you, that ball bounced and held up just enough on Martinez that we met could get in there and get a piece of it. Is a brilliant ball through, but it just pops up right there and not in a place where he can do anything with it to put it on frame and, and just hangs there just enough for we met. Good close out by Martinez. Hello. Herrera. Advantage is being played. Herrera is an interesting player. It, it comes through him, and then he lays it off and just sort of disappears, and then pops up in critical spots. Barrett got there first before Jackson could put much on it. By the way, we're going to see Gabriel Rodriguez for the first time for the Indy 11. Going to replace Ilya Illich. So we'll see two Brazilians on the field together. Pasher, the long-distance target. They'll get there first. Roberts and he collided. I was a content to stand over top the ball for a moment. Make Charlotte send a little more effort defensively. Credit Charlotte. They have really kind of stemmed the offensive flow for the Indy 11 as of late. And then and it, it's, you know, some micro decisions that they've made. Back in here, the last time Pasher had the ball out on the edge, you, know, you got Roberts coming out to the ball, and Johnson just tucks in behind him. So when Pasher looks up, it's not there, there's not the opportunity for him to go. So Ilya Illich will exit. Gabriel Rodriguez will make his Indy 11 debut. Signed a couple of weeks ago by the team. He will join Lucas Farias as the Brazilians on the pitch. So now Illich will exit. Rodriguez joined Drew Conner and Christian Navoa as new players introduced two weeks ago by the club. With Thomas Enavolz and Kim Doyon exiting. Twenty-two, Gabriel Rodriguez. Leading the match 
Now Johnson slides it through. Good ball. Barrett with the shot block, but a corner coming. This match is far from over. And Patty Barrett gonna get on his teammates and let's go, fellas. So kind of an emotional lull right now for the Indy 11. Yeah, you just have to fall asleep one time. Martinez steers it in. Herrera the target. Didn't get everything he wanted to on it. And Rodriguez, well defended. Was there a deflection there? No, corner coming. Oh, right idea. Just not the final touch for Charlotte. Q Roberts was the intended target. Reminder fans at the Indy 11 are part of the USL's Game of the Week coming up on Friday night, which means you can watch the Indy 11 and lose City FC on ESPN3. Now, a friendly reminder, if you want to watch the Indy 11 broadcast, tune to Wish TV at 7 o'clock, as I'll be joined by Mark Newman for that broadcast, one of our three road telecasts this year on Wish TV. Good turn, Connor. Rodriguez draws the foul. Free kick coming in the most dangerous of areas. And Tico not happy about the call. Rodriguez brings something that we haven't seen for the Indy 11 in quite some time. That is a target forward. Elliot Collier on loan last yep. year. Ben Spencer going back to year number one. Zion and Braun both had good size. But Rodriguez goes a good 6'3", 6'4". What's your bet here? I would think maybe a back post steer across goal mouth combination might be in play here. It's worked a couple of times for the Indy 11 tonight. And where the wall is setting up, it might be a direct shot on goal for Iose. I think that's why you, you read this here and you see who's got the better, you know, little, little gap to place it in, Farias or Iose. It's Iose directly at Miller. Wherever you go, take the boys in blue with you. Whoa. Yeah. And how about that? <laughs> That's unbelievable. A miscue <laughs> leads to a freebie for the Indy 11. And a third goal for a second time in as many meetings with the Independents this year. <laughs> oh. You just, you, you know, your heart goes out for Brandon Miller. He's played a, a heck of a game. Miller rolls it out and literally directs it off of Drew Cotter. What are the chances? What are the chances? And Drew Cotter, in his second game with the Indy 11, has the most unlikely of braces. <laughs> Sometimes a great athletic skill is to stay exactly where you are, <laughs> is to not move. Hey, then we're both athletes. We're both good athletes. The older we get, the better we were. 3 1. I think Connor will be a guest of ours on the post game show. Uh, Abdulli Mansai in for Aaron Mon. The Charlotte has used all three substitutions. And frankly, given I think the effort that Miller has put in, as you have said, but Charlotte in general has put in an unfortunate bounce. And let's see if it leaves opportunity here. Sabella, left foot doesn't get through. Wamet with the shot block. Brilliantly closed down. 
frankly, Charlotte has played better than to be in a two-goal deficit they right now. They have, you know, and you, you look, and, and it's just a, an unfortunate series of events for them. And, and they, you look at the first time these two teams played, and heroic, epic saves by Brandon Miller again. And then the ball finds the back of the net. By the way, Macaulay King will be the third substitute for the Indy 11. Coming up in a matter of moments. Now let's tell you about the Indy 11 app. Wherever you go, take the boys in blue with you. Download the all-new Indy 11 app in the Apple Store or get it on Google Play. It's the seventh time this year that Charlotte has allowed three or more goals. And they have now allowed 42 goals as a team. And there were some late goals in the offing last time for Charlotte that these two teams played. As of now, this score is a repeat of the last time out for Charlotte. A 3-1 loss to Nashville. Could there be more? Pasher gets around Roberts, plays it across. A ball. Beautiful back post ball. There's nobody there. Rodriguez, the player closest to it. Our final five minutes plus stoppage time in tonight's get match brought to you by your central Indiana Honda dealers official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. Tell you, and you look at that play right there and if Rodriguez had been in camp maybe another two weeks and understands what Tyler Pasher can do and how he can get that ball across that may be a, a fourth goal. The three goals match the most the Indy 11 have scored at home in a match this year. They got three against Birmingham Legion back on June 26th. Indy has scored four on a couple of occasions. They have both been away from home. Throw in coming for Charlotte. Before the Throw in the final substitution and a well-deserved curtain call for Drew Connor. Second match with the Indy 11, and he gets a brace. One of those, yes, a bit of a gift, but his reward for hard work was a pair of goals tonight. Macaulay King, the rookie. Young man from England who scored a goal against Charlotte back in mid-March enters the match. Oh, what a goal that was, too. Uh, Kenny Walker plays it across the top of the 18. McCauley comes in one time. It's just a ball bending away from Brandon Miller on the near post. <laughs> Sabella goes down. Well, Beck got the ball first. And so Martinez gives it a blast. Watson got a boot in the way. This result holds, and you'll go to 46 points. They'll jump back into fourth place in the Eastern Conference. They'll be seven points back of the New York Red Bulls, too. Four matches in hand. Good work to sneak that past a couple of defenders. Not out of danger yet. Martinez works his way across. Loose ball. Knocked outside of the 18. And Pasher now provides some breathing space. And I tell you, I think everybody took a look, and you saw Herrera just hanging out. There's Rodriguez. Let's see it. 1v1. Left foot lines it up, takes a deflection. Corner kick coming. Great recovery by Roberts. And the 11 will play New York Red Bulls, too, in their next home match a week from Wednesday, September the 4th. We'll have that for you on my Indy TV and ESPN Plus. Coverage beginning at 7. And next up for Indy at Louisville Friday night. You can see that game on Wish TV at 7 o'clock. Louisville has won four straight. And if this result holds, they would be four points back of Indy. And a 1 0 victory did Louisville yesterday against North Carolina FC. Wamet looking maybe for a second goal tonight. And King commits the foul.
Well, Indy has gotten good efforts from their two opponents. Two teams that are just outside the playoff picture right now in St. Louis and Charlotte. Another Indy 11 foul. But next up, it's your two-time defending cup champs and the first place team. And a team that beat you earlier this year in Red Bulls 2 back in late April. And again, when that match takes place on Friday, it is the start of five matches in 15 days for the Indy 11. And that, that's what makes you take a look at some of these roster moves, um, guys that they're picking up late, uh, different guys starting, giving guys rest, the team rounding into health right now. All of that stuff is so critical for this stretch of the season. The flick for Pasher, trying to get that left boot, sprints forward, and that will be a corner coming. And it's almost a carbon copy of what you saw against St. Louis, where Pasher is out on the right side and, and wants to cut it back. Roberts would not let him. Whether he watched that video from last week or not, he sat on the left foot, made sure that he kept going out to the right. As it stands now, a 20th consecutive home match without a loss. Three minutes of added time, by the way. Tacked onto this one. Bash with the left foot. Neither Romet nor Rodriguez could get to it in time. To steer in a different direction. In that span of 20 matches, 13 of those have been victories. That streak right now bookended by matches against Charlotte. King. Gives the foul. Looking back post, Sabella. Jackson looking to make the turn. Good looking ball here, but Farias heads it to Gibson and Pasher. Pasher eventually will track it down. By the way, Charlotte will be in action on Friday as well when they play host to the Charleston Battery at 7 o'clock for their next game. Again, they have just eight games remaining. And so that crunch for that 10th and final playoff spot, that is not in the distant future. That's right now for the Independents. Yeah, that, that, that crunch got a little bit tougher based on tonight. Especially knowing you scored first. Yeah, and if they could have pulled a point out of this, I, I think that would have been a, a, a really uh, good feeling rolling into this last stretch that they, they still have a heartbeat. They're not out of it, but they're 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 at the end. They can't afford to lose another point. Charlotte finished just outside of the playoff picture a year ago as well. Final minute of this one. They're looking at their 14th victory of the season. With 12 matches left to play. Herrera. Now Alex Martinez. Hackshaw didn't let it get through. But a foul is given outside of the 18. Looks like on Pasher. And Martinez offering a lecture to a nine-goal scorer this year. <laughs> and with the time being taken to set this up, there may be one final look on goal for Charlotte, but not enough time to affect the overall outcome of this one. You would think this would be Herrera's ball to go for goal. It will be. Off the wall. And this one's over. No need for further action. The Indy 11 score the last three. Two of them belonging to Drew Connor. 20 consecutive matches at home without a loss. The second longest streak 
in franchise history. And back into the top four in the Eastern Conference table for the Indy 11. And with a handful of games in your back pocket, I think the, there's nobody above them that has, they don't have at least two games on. Next up for the Indy 11, Friday night in Louisville against the two-time defending USL Cup champions, Lou City FC. But first, more post-game festivities. So 3-1 our final score. Iose taking a well-deserved seat at the conclusion of this one. We will have our central Indiana Honda Dealers post-game show coming up for you in a matter of moments. We also will have our West Fork Whiskey shot of the game. And you, you look at the, the vibe that this team is giving off right now. Body language didn't change when the goal got scored. Game plan didn't change once the goal got scored. And they just kept grinding, fighting back. And, it, and it's a team that's playing with such confidence right now. It, it's it's almost like they know it, it's going to it's just going to happen. It'll happen whether it's in the 80th minute, the 60th minute. It's going to happen. Time now for our West Fork whiskey shot of the game. West Fork whiskey, Indiana's premier whiskey distillery. Patty Barrett, you dial up the bicycle, you put it on frame, you help set up the go ahead goal. You get the West Fork whiskey I, shot of the game. That is just amazing. Connors first, he tack on another on the goal clearance went awry from Brandon Miller. So a pair of three goal performances in a season sweep of the Charlotte Independence for the Indy 11. Now two goals on the year for Connor in just two matches with the Indy 11. And the red out successful for the Indy 11 tonight. Stay tuned in our central Indiana Honda Dealers postgame show. We will hear from Drew Connor, Carl Womet, and the head coach of the Indy 11, and Martin Renning. Next time the Indy 11 will be at home, it'll be against the top club in the Eastern Conference, New York Red Bulls 2. That is on Wednesday night, September the 4th. Well, they put in a handful of goals the other night. 5-1 winners over the Swope Park Rangers. Again, your final score here at Lucas Oil Stadium in the 11-3. Charlotte Independence won. Back to wrap up our game broadcast after this. Indy 11 Soccer is brought to you by your Central Indiana Honda dealers, proud to be the official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. And by Community Health, exceptional care simply delivered, Community Health Network. Back for the final time for our game broadcast, but don't worry, 
There is the Central Indiana Honda Dealers postgame show. We'll talk with head coach Martin Running and the goal scorers for tonight's contest, Carl Wilmet, as well as Drew Connor. For now, Brad, your final thoughts on this one. Love it. I mean, this team is just in a in a phase right now where you're thinking anything's going to happen, but it's always going to wind up on the good side of things. The Indy 11 pick up their 14th victory of the season, and again, they are now in fourth place in the Eastern Conference. 3-1, final score at Lucas Oil Stadium this evening. Stay tuned, post-match coverage continues next as you're watching Indy 11 soccer on MyIndyTV and ESPN+. Plus. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.